So I'm Hitesh Batra. I'm the Assistant Professor of Medicine in the Division of Pulmonary Allergy and Critical Care Medicine in Department of Medicine. I joined faculty here in 2015. I'm the Director of Interventional Pulmonology and Plural Disease Program. Uh, today we did two bronchoscopies, uh, both of which were for a lung nodule. In the first patient, there was a, a nodule in the left upper lobe. In the second patient, there was a nodule in the right middle lobe. Both of them, given the patient's history and imaging, were very concerning for lung cancer. This patient had a pre-procedure CT scan, uh, as we do with all of these uh, navigational procedures. Uh, the, this has two scans, inspir inspiration and expiration scans. The first screen, we are confirming that this is an inspiratory scan. The arms are up by the head. Uh, and on the expiration scan, we can see the arms are down. So that, that is good. That seems good here. So I'll verify this and we move on. Uh, first thing I'm looking at is uh, the sensors. The patient has six sensors and this uh, software is appropriately picking up all of them. So that's good. We go down here and that is the main carina. So I will label the main carina first. And that confirms it and picks it up on this picture. So that works well. We go on to the next screen. And this is where I look for my target and select my target. So this is a lesion that is our target lesion. And I'm going to select that. And the software does a nodule segmentation and picks up all of the nodule and does a, uh, creates a heat map there. And now we'll see, uh, it'll automatically also show us a path, uh, but first I can hit save plan. So that's, that seems appropriate. So if you can see this, this is the airway it's leading me into, into the left main, and then going into the left upper lobe, and then from there, going up into left upper lobe proper, and here's the posterior, apical posterior segment, and then the posterior segment of the left upper lobe leading right into the airway. Uh, I, I think we have a, a fair chance of getting to this, and I say fair chance because this patient has had uh, a bronchoscopy procedure with uh, a navigational bronchoscopy and that was non-diagnostic. So I'm hopeful we'll get a diagnosis with this. And this just shows me the path again, uh, sort of uh, airway reconstruction. And we can see we're going into the left main bronchus and then the left upper lobe, a pick up posterior segment and then further into the posterior subsegment of the left upper lobe and reaching to the nodule right here. So that looks good. So this screen shows if they're with the motion, with inspiration and expiration, if there's significant motion in the nodule, there could be a mismatch where we are picking up the nodule and where it actually is. Uh, and then we can adjust for it. Uh, in this case, it seems like it, it, the motion, uh, even though it is about 12 millimeters, all that is not affecting uh, the nodule location and the airway leading to it. So we don't need to make any more adjustments here. And then you can actually pull up this rendering here, Dr. Batra, and it gives you target motion, which is pretty right. critical for your cases. It, it absolutely is. And this system allows us, uh, it has a feature called respiratory gating. And that allows for us to see uh, motion of the nodule in inspiration and expiration. And we can accordingly uh, do biopsies according, uh, according to the uh, motion of the nodule. All right, so let's go on to the next screen. Now this is for spin perk. The spin perk feature allows for a transthoracic needle aspiration. Uh, in this case, we will not be doing this. Uh, there's really not a good place to do it in this patient. Um, if I try to put a needle from anywhere here, this patient's differ uh, will come in the way or it will be too far into the lung and will increase the risk of pneumothorax or bleeding significantly. Um, and, and that's what makes th these kind of nodules difficult. This is a typical, what we call the middle third of the lung problem. Uh, nodules that are within the proximal one third are easy to get to but with endobronchial ultrasound or have endobronchial lesion. Uh, nodules that are further out, we can either get with navigation, but if we don't, we can get with a CT guided biopsy or other ways. Now, this nodule will be difficult to get uh, from the outside, even with CT guidance, because from uh, in the, uh, anteriorly and laterally, it's going to be far out. <clears throat> and if you try to approach it posteriorly, 
either we'll get scapula in the middle or we will be crossing the fissure, which will again significantly increase the risk of pneumothorax. So it's really critical and important we are able to get the diagnosis endobronchially. All right, so that is for the planning and we will export this plan to our system and we'll start the procedure. So this patient has a history of uh, colon cancer, which was resected back in 2010 and he did get some adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, we are looking at this monitor now. And anyway, so now he has this left upper lobe nodule, which could potentially be recurrent cancer and metastatic, but chances are that this is a primary lung malignancy. So I will start off with the 11R, I see 11R lymph node here. I will, no, I will let you know in just a moment. I see a 4R lymph node there. We have station seven lymph node, a couple of lymph nodes there. And then I need some balloon here. And then we have four L lymph node there. And then we'll go down into the and they have 11L as well. So we will be sampling all of these lymph nodes. So we'll start off with 11R. So I'm measuring my sheath there and it's just inside the port. Or just inside the view from the camera which means it's outside this working channel and I go back to 11R and all right take the silent out please might be easy to come from yeah, yeah. take it out then, yeah that's good yeah All right, this is 11, uh, 11 R. Eleven R is negative and a good ass grip. Yeah, so that's the PA right there. Yeah. So that's the four L. So if you come up, now that's the arch of the order. Okay. So that's the PA. Now, if you go further down, then, yeah, that's a 10 actually, which is uncommon, but it actually looks suspicious. So it might be positive there, but anyway. So we are going to 4L now. Okay, let's sell it out. Uh, station seven is negative and good ass brick. Are you getting sample? Okay. Okay, so. That feels pretty good on the main client. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, hold on. So open. No, just keep it open. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And yeah, that's. Hold on. Let me try. Okay, that's where I am on the Carina. You can okay. see it. So, right around where my yeah. mouth is? Yeah, that's good. You're still there? Yeah. Okay, so you see how that's going to adjust it on the scan? Okay. Let's go ahead. Okay, close it. Carry. Close it. So this is the right secondary Carina. Yeah, it's not bad actually. Yeah, let's check the one on the left side as well. Okay. And I'm looking at the axial when you rotate, you sort of see it come in really nicely. I don't know if it's kind of like you can come in a position like that. Yeah. I think that's okay. Yeah, I agree. So we'll verify. Okay. So let's up a little closer. Okay. Let's get a needle. Okay. I'm about to give you a sample from the nodule. Okay. All right, let's go to our nodule. So I'm still a little in here, huh? This is a little in here, but it's showing you can get in. All right. Okay, you ready? Left upper lo nodule. Okay. So. Okay, that's fine. That whole section. Okay. Needle section off. Needle back. Needle back. All right. You kind of have to put the needle into the scope and get it to the tip before I navigate because when I'm making a cute curve like that, it's very difficult to make the needle bend through a curved scope. Um, the needle is in, but it has blurred my camera a little, but that's good. So we'll get it right to the edge. And now I will drive to this. So this is the main carina, left main. This is the left upper lobe, that's lingula. This is the anterior segment. This is the apical posterior. And then here's the posterior. And then within that, I see three more segments. Sub segment, the one right there in the middle. Okay, so with, I'll tell you when to be ready. And I'm gonna match our needle deployment with the excretory phase here. So, and deploy. Deploy. I'm right at the edge of the lesion. But it might give us something. I 
as you can see here, this is a slide through view that shows us the nodule, and those are the three planes, uh, axial, oblique, and another oblique, that just gives me different planes in which my needle is, different planes in which my needle is moving. and showing my proximity of the needle tip. The center of this thing over there, that's the needle tip. And this is the needle tip right here. And so as I said, we are a little bit on the edge of the nodule here, but I'm hopeful we'll get some cells. Okay, suction off, needle back. Back. Okay, I'm pulling back out. Eric, do you see anything? No, I'm not looking at the first task. You have atypical cells. Okay. Awesome. So when we compare, of course this data is old, but when we compare needle versus brush versus forceps biopsies, needle biopsies, as we tend to have a slightly higher diagnostic yield than forceps biopsies. And which in turn are better than brush. Of course, the best diagnostic yield is if we combine all modalities. So that's what we'll do here. Is uh, that because forceps can crush the sample a little bit? Uh, that and then sometimes it's not necessarily in the bronchus. The needle can actually go through the airway wall, essentially. And... Okay, hold the scope there and be ready to deploy. I'll tell you when. Okay, now. Yep. Okay. Needle out. Come back. Out, pull the back. Okay, good deal. My favorite ad node is on the decoy. Okay. So we have diagnosis here. It looks like non-small cell cancer. Uh, this is likely lung cancer, but given its history of uh, colon cancer, I'm gonna get more tissue so that we can do immunohistochemistry chemistry uh, to confirm diagnosis. And this patient is not a surgical candidate if this turns out to be primary lung cancer because of his severe emphysema and uh, poor functional status. He's already seen it, our thoracic surgeon. So at this point, I'm going to get some more samples and then we'll go ahead and put fiducial markers in. Those uh, markers help the radiation oncologist to plan uh, stereotactic uh, radiation, which will be the treatment of choice here when he can get. So that looks good. You're just anterior, so you're about 14 millimeters away. You can see right there. And deploy, you'll have a producer just kind of serious with a nodule. Okay, so that looks good. Yep. Okay, deploy it. Deploy. I think that's pretty good. I think let's do this, right? I think that's pretty good. Looks good? Okay. Deploy. Uh, deploy it now. Deploy. Deploy. Yeah, so that's where that might right there. Perfect. Okay. Now it's so closing. Should be closed. Okay, let go of the All right, so here we have uh, the pre procedure CT scan for this patient. This is an inspiration scan and that's an end expiration scan. We know this because we can see the arms down by the side on this scan. Our arms are up here, so we'll verify that. This looks good. So uh, first step, uh, I'm looking at all six sensors have been picked up by the system, so that looks good. Uh, I'll scroll down here in the airway reconstruction and I'm going to mark the carina and that is matched up here on the CT scan, so that looks good as well. So we'll go ahead and hit next and this is the screen where uh, we pick up our nodule, this is the tar select target uh, selection. So this patient had two bronchoscopies to that, that, target this nodule? So this patient has actually had three bronchoscopies, two of them which were uh, navigational bronchoscopies, and all three of them have been 
um, negative. Okay. And it, the, this patient has also had a PET scan, and that PET scan shows that this is really FDG Abbott. And really, when you look at this, it's speculated. This patient is high risk. She has been. She has more than 60 pack year smoking history, and uh, and it's lighting up on PET. So this is this is uh, likely to be malignant. So uh, we'll, we'll try and get to it and hopefully make a diagnosis. So I'm selecting the target here, and the software does not nodule segmentation on its own, and you can see it picks up all of the nodule uh, from superior to the inferior, and all of it it automatically picks it up. What's exactly what's going on here is this is uh, the trachea, right main stem bronchus, uh, bronchus intermedius, going into the right middle of bronchus, then into the lateral. And within the lateral, it seems like there's a more lateral subsegment and I'm uh, sort of going apically from there. That branch goes right into that nodule. So, so there is an airway going to it, and that makes me feel better about this. But this is going to be a very awkward angle to take, so we may not be able to engage our instruments. So this is the same thing. So we'll be in the right main bronchus, bronchus intermedius here, right middle lobe bronchus going into the lateral, so I think I will be able to get up, up until here. Now, this is going to be the difficult angle, like I was saying. But when I look at the scan, I think I would prefer making this diagnos diagnosis bronchoscopically because of her significant risk of um, uh, pneumothorax. Right. And she's had two navigational bronchoscopies before, but it was a different system, and I think we might have a better shot with this system. Uh, so let's get you. All right, so starting EBUS, I'm going into the, through the endotracheal tube, the trachea, that's the main carina. We have already done an airway exam that was normal. We have already established a diagnosis of non smell cell carcinoma in that right middle lobe nodule, so we'll start staging now. I'm going to start with uh, looking at the 11L lymph node. Uh, that would make it N3 disease if it were to be positive. And I do see an 11L lymph node, so we'll start over there. All right. All right. All right. Whew. Perfect. So it's called the Hawthorne effect. Yeah, you know, your performance improves when you're being observed. <laughs> so we got three fiducials in uh, around the nodule, and that's it. We are concluding the procedure. What's the stop time? Uh, so today we did endobronchial ultrasound uh, with bronchoscopy for mediastinal staging. Uh, both of these patients had uh, no nodal involvement. All the lymph nodes that we sampled uh, were negative in both of these patients. Then I navigated, used our navigation system to reach the nodules and establish the diagnosis. And then in both of these patients today, uh, they were not uh, neither of them are good candidates for curative thoracic surgery. So 
uh, I did place fiducials, uh, and that will assist the radiation oncologist in planning for radiation treatment in both of these patients. Uh, when it comes to approaching a patient with suspected lung cancer, uh, our approach is that every patient deserves very uh, quick and expedited treatment and uh, diagnosis and treatment. So uh, we've had patients, uh, we often get patients where we get a request for a clinic appointment and we see them in clinic and make a diagnosis and refer them for treatment within 48 to 72 hours. Now, of course, that's not always the case, but we try to do this for all our patients within a week or two where we can make, uh, see them, evaluate them, make a diagnosis and refer for treatment. So one thing that we are quick about it. Uh, two, we have the whole range of expertise in doing these procedures. Uh, what we did today is um, a navigational bronchoscopy. The system we use today is the Varen system. There's another competitor in the market that's called Super Dimension. We also have that. So that's another thing where we have uh, different kinds of systems which are similar, but they have their own advantages. Uh, in different uh, proceed settings. So today we use the Varen system, and uh, this uh, the first patient had had a navigational bronchoscopy with a super dimension system, but was non-diagnostic. Uh, but we were able to reach diagnosis today. The second patient actually had uh, already had three bronchoscopies, two of which were navigational, and we were able to establish diagnosis. Uh, so right after we are done here, I'm going to uh, call up our radiation oncologist and set both of these patients up in their clinic so they can get to treatment. So yes, I believe the best way to refer patients is to call the UAB MIST line uh, by calling UAB 1-800-UAB-MIST. Uh, um, as I said before, we, we do offer uh, all sorts of diagnostic uh, bronchoscopy procedures here and therapeutic procedures. Uh, uh, we have a web page that lists all the things that we do here. And uh, if there's, um, uh, we are always uh, uh, willing to accept referrals from anywhere. And we often do get a lot of referrals from even out of state and not within Alabama.